So as a leader at Biotechnica, I'm open to questions. And, and as you know that Biotechnica has so many subscribers. So that means a lot of students write to me almost on a daily basis in email or WhatsApp with their queries. And there are two ways I reply to them. One is I will, if it's a personal query, I'll reply to them personally. If it is a general query, then I'll make a video just like how I'm doing right now. So this query has come, I'll read out. And uh, it, she says that if I want to do a PhD in virology or say any topic, uh, should I do PhD in Japan or Korea or Russia or Germany instead of staying in India? So that's her question. And she says that um, what is the difference it will make to my career? Gaining knowledge and expertise in this particular virology field in these countries or India, which is better. And uh, she mentions that recently I've seen a scholarship in Japan, but they're asking which institute you want to apply, but I don't have any idea about specific institute and uh, what parameters I should, uh, you know, use to decide whether I should do or not. So that's the question. So there are two questions here. The first is, of course, the guidance. The second is which particular institute they should apply, right? I'm going to answer both of them in this video. Now, the first point, which I think uh, you all should know is definitely without any doubt, all these countries have amazing research infrastructure because they are developed countries, not because India is bad, because they are developed countries, they had a lot of resources. Of course, probably they have, uh, you know, invested since past 50 or 70 years, while India is still a nascent country in research. So that is why they may have a better infrastructure. And when you have a better infrastructure, infrastructure decides and determines a lot of things. Okay. And that's my personal, um, you know, uh, observation also, like, like, we could not do so many videos on, on career guidance when we were in the previous office, but now we can do it because of the infrastructure. We have, right. Same thing. So the research infrastructure, which is there in Japan or Korea or China or Russia or Germany is really very high. So yeah, because of that, you get a boost. Right. So if you are someone who wants to really be at the top notch research, cutting edge research, I don't think there is a problem here. But the problem begins with the second point, which is language barrier. So if you are in Germany, German, in Japan, Japanese, Chinese, China or Russia, Russian, right? all these countries are non English speaking, non native countries where you are really going to struggle if you are weak in learning languages like how I am. So, you know, if you are weak in that, so this language barrier is going to really be a tough problem there. So if you are planning to get in there first, think about it, whether you'll be comfortable conversing in the language, if language is not a big deal, you can always get in. But yeah, of course, with the help of technology and apps like Duolingo, you can always learn it and you can always translate using Google Translate. So that should not be a big problem. But yeah, if you are a slow learner, this is gonna be a problem. Okay, let's jump into the third point, which is again, very big entry barrier. And that is cost of living. So you know, here, what you can afford in $1 there, it will cost you $10. For example, you go to a normal restaurant in Germany or Japan, the high cost of living is going to be a barrier. So if you are thinking that you're going to fund it from your pocket, please don't go because you are wasting your parents tough, I mean, hard earned money. Instead, look for scholarship. Unless you have a scholarship, don't go abroad. Otherwise, it will just kill all the money which you have in the bank. Okay, it's really costly. I'll tell you these ecosystems, these research ecosystems are designed in such a way, it's my personal observation, that whatever scholarship they'll give you, say $2,000 or $5,000, whatever they'll give you, they'll make sure that it's spent then and there. That's the high cost of living there. Okay. Eating in a restaurant will cost you $10, which, which normally costs you cost here $1. That's a kind of 10 times, ex, you know, increased expenditure that will kill you. So don't even think about it if you don't have a scholarship. So first apply for scholarship, get it, take it, then go in. Okay. Now, another very important thing which you have to consider is, see, your living style and standard here is different. Like you may have your own personal room, personal study things, but there you may be sharing rooms with multiple people. I know this is not a big deal for many of you, but it can be a big deal for those who are used to, you know, work and live in solitary uh, dormitories, like how I was. So that can be a big problem. The next thing which, which can really be a challenge is the time zone difference. So if you are there, the difference in the time zones will be such that when there is morning, here is afternoon or there is, um, there is morning, here is evening, 
this kind of zone time zone difference can really be tough when you really want to reach out to your near and dear ones and the distance so you can't really quickly come back because the flight cost is going to be very high there is a family emergency or your parents need you you may not be able to reach on time so that's something which you should consider now coming to the last point which is advisor and specific institute where to apply now this is going to be a big thing so instead of me recommending you what i can suggest you is we have started a mentorship program called as biotechnic mentorship program and uh, the link i'll give in the description if you apply there our mentors will come two times uh, on a sunday uh, every month they'll come and you can directly take help from them so we have mentors from korea germany italy japan european union any country you say it or name it as well as us so more than 120 mentors are there on this platform so if you enroll into this mentorship program they will guide you on that specific query okay i think that's uh, something which you should know so and we'll keep informing you which expert is coming generally we have 3 to 4 mentors every alternate weeks we are coming up with and you can join us there and you can take advantage of the mentorship where they will guide you on specific institutes and specific scholarships and funding which is available so that's all about today's session and video thank you so much for watching i hope it was useful let me know in the comment section if you want to personally reach out to me you know what to do email me at shekhar@biotechnica.org my job is to help you let's do that together all the best thank you bye bye